In this video, we will take a look at intersection types in Java. We will see what they are and where we can use them. Now watch till the very end because we are going to see a concrete example of how JVM generates these intersection types. Let's start with a simple question. If you look at the variable declaration on the screen, what do you think is the type of variable list? In Java, the type of a variable is decided at compile time. And for that reason, Java is considered statically typed. Now, since the elements of this list are an integer and a string, the most reasonable answer would be list of object. But that answer would be wrong. If you type the above code into an IDE and place your mouse over the variable, you will get the shock of your life. The IDE tells us that the type is this. Now, this is not even the complete type. The three dots actually expand to a bit more. Now, what happened here? The JVM actually inferred the type of the element of the list by recognizing that both string and integer implements serializable, comparable, constable, and constant desk interfaces. Based on this, it generated a type for the element by concatenating these types with an ampersand character. It's not important what this means at this point, but what you see is that the type of each element of the list is not inferred as a simple string, integer, or object, but a more complex type, which is called an intersection type. Now the question is, what is an intersection type? Here's a bookish explanation. If T1, T2, T3, and so forth are types, which means classes or interfaces in Java, then an intersection type will take the following structure, T1 and T2 and T3 and so on. It's expressing a type that extends or implements directly or indirectly from T1 and T2 and so on and so forth, all at the same time. Let's see a concrete example. On the screen, the intersection type number ampersand comparable represents a type which extends from a number, but also implements comparable, both. But we cannot explicitly declare a variable of an intersection type. For example, the following is not allowed and the compiler will give an error. But if we cannot declare a variable of an intersection type, how do they get created? Now, in many cases, the JVM dynamically creates the intersection types during type inference, but developers can also create them using Java generics. Let's take a practical example to clear this up. We will write a method which finds the greater of two numbers. Our first naive implementation is probably to write something like what you see on the screen. So number is an abstract class in Java, and there are concrete implementations like integer, long, float, big decimal, and so on, which basically extends from number. Since this method must work for all types of numbers, which can be compared, this is not an easy task. The number abstract class does not implement comparable, and so we cannot use the comparable interface to compare these two numbers. So basically the type of parameters n1 and n2 must be a number class as well as it should implement comparable interface. We can express this by using intersection types. How do we do this? We will use generics. By using generics, the parameters of the method is a parameterized type t, which is declared to extend from both number and comparable. You can see that. By doing this now, all number objects which are comparable can be passed to method greater as parameters. More importantly, within the method greater, we can use the compare to method from the comparable interface to compare the two numbers. So this is an excellent example of how intersection type can solve problems for us. Now here are some of the examples of using the method greater by passing different types of numbers. The first example, we have integers being passed as numbers, 
And in the second example, we have big decimal objects being passed as parameters to the greater method. Both work just fine. But a lot of times the JVM surprises us by inferring a particular type as an intersection type. We already saw an example at the start of this video. Here's another example. This example is an example of a switch expression where the JVM infers the type of the variable result. With the new switch expression, it evaluates to a single value and can be assigned to a variable. But nothing stops the developer from returning objects of different types within the switch cases. You can see that on the screen. For case New York, the code is returning a string, whereas for default case, it is returning a big decimal object, which is zero. You would at this point think that the result would be of type object. But no, the type of variable result at compile time will be inferred by the JVM as the following. It figured out that both string and integer implements serializable and comparable, and so it created an intersection type of these two interfaces. By the way, it's no accident that we are using keyword var to declare variable result. Using var has an advantage and we will soon see why. To explain why war is needed, let's take an example of a situation which happens very often. We have two simple interfaces, X and Y. Now interfaces B and C directly extend from interfaces X and Y, but in practice note that it may extend indirectly as well. Now go ahead and take a look at the switch expression at the bottom of the screen. Here, we are returning an implementation of B and C in the switch cases. So what's the type associated with variable result? Now, since B and C implement both interfaces X and Y, the return type is a type which extends both X and Y. So the JVM assigns the intersection type X ampersand Y to result. But as mentioned before, we cannot declare result with that type. It's not allowed. Now we avoid that restriction by using var for the variable result. By doing that, we are able to preserve the returned intersection type. As a result, we can call any of the methods associated with interfaces X and Y because we know that this return type has both interfaces X and Y. So you can see on the screen, some of these calls are valid. They directly call interfaces X and Y methods, but the following calls are invalid and will give a compile error because they are calling A and B, which may not exist. Now, if we don't use the war keyword, we could assign the switch expression to an object or an interface X or an interface Y. These assignments would be valid, but would not fully express the return type of switch. And most certainly we will have to do casting to actually call any methods of X or Y. So basically intersection types are a bit more complex and usually hidden behind the war declaration. If you like this video, give a thumbs up to support this channel and also do not forget to subscribe for more original content.